Hi guys, welcome back to the channel and um, welcome back to another Conversations With. Uh, I hope you guys are enjoying these Conversations With that we're doing. Um, yeah, this is a really exciting one because this is with our mates. Yes. yes. This is a Family Motorhome Travel channel and, fa and Family Motorhome Travel um, will continue as soon as we can get out and about. Yeah. But without further ado, let's introduce... Life Beyond Bricks Yay. is Joe and Tash. Hi Hello. guys, how are we doing? Hello, we're Thanks, good. Yeah. We're good. <laughs> Welcome along. It feels ages since we've seen you in person. I know. Yeah. It was it was only just before Christmas, wasn't it? But I think because we haven't seen you before that for so long, it does feel like a lifetime. It does, yes. Yeah, I'm missing wine as well. <laughs> yes. Vince <laughs> has been good. She, she's been good with the yoga and cutting down on drinking wine. Oh. No, I'm missing drinking wine with Tash. Well, drinking wine. Well, with, with them. <laughs> Both of them. Definitely. With your whiskey as well. Oh, Ooh. yeah, whiskey. Oh. oh, that was good. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> we got plenty of that to come yet, though. We've got loads of time. Don't you worry. <laughs> Let's hope so. Yeah, yes, hope so. Now, hopefully. Yes, from the twelfth we can move around. I understand April the twelfth. Yeah, fingers hopefully. crossed. Hopefully. So yeah. excited. Yes. Yeah. yeah. We are too. In fact, we're going away that very first weekend. I think. Yeah. So we can move around. So yes. Buzzing. Yeah. Yes. Buzzing. <laughs> so, um, listen. How did you guys meet? Let's get to the beginning. How did you guys meet? How did we meet? Oh, How do, yes. yes, not me and you, but you and John. <laughs> okay, well, this is quite funny. I'll I'll tell this one if you like. Yeah, so yeah, this okay. is quite funny. So you've got to let John have a get a word in edgeways at some stage, Tash. We know, we know <laughs> <Steve> interrupting. <laughs> <laughs> carry on, carry on, Tash. Anyone that knows him knows that he doesn't talk that much, so I, I have to fill in, but, but I will take this one. Oh. I will take this one. So basically what happened is, um, I, we've, I've always had voxels, and obviously John was a voxel technician for... 21, 21 years, years yeah, by the 21, time yeah. by the time he left oh, so years okay. and years and years ago i took my car in one day because it had a problem and i was stood at the front desk and this mechanic kept coming out from the back and kept walking via the desk and um and was he flirting well i was with a friend <laughs> and she said oh that guy's been out like three or four times and i was like oh <laughs> I don't, maybe he has I don't know and I was in my work uniform because I worked uh, for a station a big stationery store that was about 10 minutes up the road so I had my uniform on and then didn't think any more of it and then one day while I was at work this very mechanic pops in and I'm like oh that's the guy from Vauxhall okay didn't think any more of it <laughs> and then he come and asked for my help and I was selling him some bits and bobs I mean he actually came uh, to do some Christmas shopping for his family at Stationers, so I should have known then that that was a bit weird. But um... <laughs> John, <laughs> yeah. So yeah, he came in, and then it, this went on for weeks and weeks and weeks to the point where my boss at work was like, "Oh, your friend's going to have to stop coming in." I said, "I don't know the guy. He just comes he in banned from Staples." Yeah, because he came and chatted, and then one of my he other... was stalking you, wasn't he? Yeah. Pretty much. <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah. He was stalking you. And then how it starts. And then one of <laughs> yeah. and then one of my other managers said, "Oh, if you don't ask that." guy because i was looking at the warehouse window i was staring at him one day and then um <laughs> one of the other guys goes if you don't ask him out i'm going to and i was like oh don't but then eventually he fucked up the courage to ask me out and then oh, that was it and that yeah. was what was that like 14 years ago nearly yeah. about yeah. 13 or 14 13, years ago yeah, so wow. yeah and that's Fantastic. how it well, in my head that was like um, a calendar from the 90s, you know, with your mechanic, or buff. <laughs> yeah. And I was, second I was buff. thing... She did fatten me up. So. <laughs> I used to be, I used to have a six pack, I used to have... Uh, you did actually, you did so actually did, used to have a six pack, I used to, to be run fair. marathons. <laughs> really, John? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Wow. <laughs> Steve used to have a six pack as well, didn't you? Now it's a keg. Yeah, now it's a keg. <laughs> <laughs> it's a keg, my love. Yeah, I've got one of those. Um, the other thing I was going to say is don't knock stationery. I love shopping for stationery. That's how I ended up working That's... there. So I used to work for Staples, basically, before it went, obviously, yeah. got made redundant a f uh, quite a few years ago. But that's how I ended up working there, because I love stationery. Love, love, love it. Oh, that's brilliant. I love taking the boys. Well, they hate it, but I try and take the boys <laughs> shopping at the, in September every year, just before they go back. Let's go buy some stationery. Yes! Like, mm, <laughs> that mm. was a good day out. I used to love the back to school yes. day. For you girls, right. Mm. Okay, yeah, mm. for us girls. Yeah, yeah, that's fair enough. Okay, yeah. I'll take that. <laughs> <laughs> 
okay so staying back in the dawn of time that sounded ruder than it should have done it <laughs> um, so staying back in history what kind of holidays did you used to go on as children uh well to be honest i didn't really go on a lot of holidays it was just me and my mum um so any holidays okay. we had were sort of butlins or the odd static caravan holiday i didn't actually go on my first flyaway holiday till i was like 18 when i could obviously pay for it myself um snap me as well yeah really? so and well, you used to go on caravan holidays, uh, didn't you? Uh, yeah, I spent a lot of my childhood in France, uh, like on holidays, that is. Um, and then, you know, a lot of that was just like hiring houses and stuff like that, hiring like gites. My mum just loved France. She ended up buying a house mm. over there. Um, and oh, so we had a few, and we also had a few <coughs> caravan holidays in in the UK, mostly in Wales. In Wales, in Hungothland. Uh, again, yeah, we used to hire, <laughs> we used to hire like caravans. That was in the days where you could just hire a cheap caravan for like, you know, sort of silly, silly cheap money. Um, we, so that's yeah. probably where my initial love of sort of travelling come from was probably a bit of France, a bit of Europe and caravanning as well. Mm. So fond memories, John, I do say to everyone that's really had caravan holidays as a kid, it's got fond memories. I mean, yeah, yeah. Oh, it's brilliant. Yeah. yeah, I used to love it. And yeah. I think even, I think even then, I used to think to myself, "Oh, why can't you live in one of these?" Then <laughs> <laughs> the always probably, seed was planted. It was always in my mind, like, "Oh, these are pretty good." You know, why can't you just live in one of these? <laughs> and you now are. So. <laughs> Full three sixty there, brilliant. Okay, so you've been together fourteen years. Did you live in a house at first? How? When did you decide to move into a motorhome together? So, okay, so the, the first part of that, we, um, John actually moved in with me. So we got engaged on our first anniversary and we were married on our second anniversary. So it was quite quick at the start, wasn't it? So I bought my house off of the council because I actually grew up in it with my mum. And when she moved and remarried, I purchased it. And then John sold his flat to move in with me. So obviously we lived in the house together for you know a long time yeah but then once we started to enjoy motorhome and um well camper van holidays to start with and then the motorhome i think that was when it started to become we'd love to go long-term traveling and i think from mm. the long-term traveling it just turned into uh, when your mum passed away it turned mm. into right sod it you know oh sorry screw it <laughs> um let's sell, <laughs> let's sell the house that wasn't what we said we said much worse than that but um we sold the house and decided to go full-time in the motorhome and just make the best of it and that was nearly that's nearly two years ago now it's actually two years this month i was gonna say is it two years wow. yeah yeah so because we, we were in the dream oh yeah because we, we were in the house what for 10 years Yes, we're in the house for 10 years we're together, in the, yeah. In the house together, together. For, for 10 years. And then you decided to get a camper van off your... Cousin. Cousin. And that was a Volkswagen... T4. T4. Started Type out with 4. a T4, yeah. It's just a little self-converted van. It needed, like, ridiculous yeah. amounts of work, yeah. which... I did all the mechanical work. Uh, we spent quite a lot of money at a body shop. Getting it resprayed. Getting it resprayed, and... getting all the rust taken <laughs> out. That Of course, you get rust on those. Uh, and it looked really, really nice, to be honest, oh, uh, it was... after we'd done it. Uh, and, yeah. and we used that for... We used it for basically it was a day van because we used to do a lot of mountain biking so we would we wanted something we could chuck the mountain bikes in the back but we'd also have somewhere to get changed and have lunch and that while we were out for the day because obviously we used to go to like Swinley Forest didn't we so it was yeah. a few hours away <coughs> from home so that's how it started and then from there mm. we were like oh um, you know we can go to motorsport events because that's something else we enjoy is obviously motor racing and you'd sleep in it and you'd sleep in it away, would you then? Yep, yeah. so it started out as the odd night here or there at Silverstone. And mm. then from there we were like, ah, and that's where it just snowballed. And we were like, we can do anything. We can go anywhere. Yeah. We can do whatever <laughs> we want. So, yeah, that's how it... Yeah. So it was the pull of the, the, the road, life on the road, that really got you into this. Yes. Living in it full time. Yeah, for yeah. me, well, I don't know about you, but for me it's the, the fact that I can take my house with me and go wherever I want. And yeah. I don't have to get that dread at the end of each trip where I'm like, oh, we've got to go back home now. It's like, no, we are home. We can, we can go wherever we want. We can do whatever we want. Yeah, it is a no it's a nice feeling to, you, know, you can drive for uh, you know, 12 hours, but you've still got your house. Yeah, you're 12, 
normally you'd be 12 hours away from home so if you've forgotten something or you're missing something from home it's like oh i've got to drive like 12 hours back or <laughs> you've got to just finish the holiday and then go back but when you've got your home with you it's like it doesn't yeah. matter where you can go anywhere you can go anywhere anywhere in the world that you can get the motor home so and you've always got your home with you so that i think that's the what attracted us to it isn't it and the fact that we can take the cats with us because oh, yes. we missed the cats terribly when we were away and we hated it so this yeah. that was the final like thing was like we can take the girls with us brilliant that's it we never need to go back home now so yeah you spoke about the girls you spoke about your cats tell us about your cats Oh, well, I don't think we've got long enough to uh, to go on about the cats. Um, but yes, we've got three rescue cats that uh, they're all very different, and they were all indoor cats. And uh, we just missed them terribly when we were away in the van, or even on a normal mm. holiday, you know, a flyaway mm. holiday. Yeah. We used to. That's why we had cameras in how in the house so we could check on them while we were away. And um, they just they just make it a home. And we love the fact, and we're so lucky that they've taken to travel so well. <laughs> I, I really didn't see it come in it there was a lot of work mm. that went into it for about 12 months before we actually left yeah. the house of practice runs harness training etc um which we are going to be launching um, a new project actually soon all about that because we get a lot of Ooh. questions about how you know how do you take the cats mm. traveling so we have got something in the pipeline coming up very soon for anyone that's interested um because most people take dogs don't they but obviously we yep. decided to take the cats yeah and most of the time when we do our videos most of the people go well can you just can't you just film the cats why are just, you why are you guys in it because we just want to yeah, see the cats we don't so. want to see you we want to see We're the like, cats yes, fair enough so well we may yeah. well do another channel do, i was going to say another youtube channel yeah yeah, yeah. or just live gonna... live stream the cats the whole time yes. might, yeah, uh, might be you watch them just sleeping most of the time <laughs> might be coming you never know <laughs> well philip bloom philip bloom who is a very famous UK photographer yeah. um, has got his um, YouTube channel and he's very much into cats and his cats have got a YouTube channel as well so uh, maybe take yeah. a leaf out of Philip Bloom's book might yeah. be checking out yeah. Philip Bloom <laughs> yeah. 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 Or, or Philip Bloom's cats at least well yeah, yeah I was going to say yeah his cats I'll check out his cats <laughs> but yeah they uh, they make this place a home for us and um, mm. we love we get just as much enjoyment at seeing how much they love the new surroundings and the different things they get to see um, as much as we do wow. so yeah it's yeah we just love it <laughs> I, i'd have thought living full-time in the van was hard enough but with three cats as well i mean that's <laughs> incredible they don't run away um no it is like a zoo in here a lot of the time there's a there's a lot going on you know because we have the litter trays obviously indoors and you know you've got all the normal things that come with it like they need their sleep spots they all need their individual sleep spots it's actually because of them that we have an a class because they use the mm. dash as um you know as a chaise long uh, of course and uh, we chose obviously <laughs> the uh, <laughs> oh they do and obviously we chose the the garage with the trans the transverse bed with the garage underneath because it's got a door that goes through so we've actually separated off a little area in the garage for them so they, they've got plenty mm. of plenty of spaces so it does get hectic at times but once they've all you know had their naps and their feeds and stuff <coughs> um it's it's all right isn't it but yeah it's never a dull moment in here yeah. definitely i'm so in fact i don't yeah. want to jinx it but everyone's asleep so <laughs> i had this wonderful <laughs> image of the cats reclining <laughs> Oh, they do. I've got the plen sunshine. plenty of pictures. Yep. That's exactly what they do. I've got plenty of pictures. They're all stretched out <laughs> yes. where the sun comes in. We've seen them ourselves yeah. we, at Fairy Meadows that were sprawled out. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, it, of yeah. course. Besides preparing the cats for um, life in the van full time, what did you do to get ready to move into your van full time? Oh, got rid of all our stuff basically <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that would be so hard yeah, yeah. Just no. getting rid of everything was it that hard it was actually i think it was a case of learning to live with you know live with less so as time went on we kind of reduced slowly because basically i finished work um in i think it was like the june wasn't it yeah. and then obviously the house i went through in the march so i actually finished work so that i could clear the house down because at the same time i was actually clearing down his mum's house as well so i was kind of doing two right. house clearances and sales but um but yeah as, yeah as as time went on and i was getting rid of stuff it kind of made us adapt didn't it so we were learning to live with a lot less, a lot yeah. less things so mainly appliances <clears throat> all the things that you don't that you think oh gosh where am i going to do my washing how am i going to do this how am i going to do that and um you know you just 
like I say, just learn to adapt to living with less. And then I think the biggest thing was a couple of days before moving out, it was like, oh, what are we doing? What are we doing? But then <laughs> the first night in the van, both of us were like giddy as anything, weren't we? Yeah. No, <clears throat> no regrets, no nothing. It just felt right. And then all those obstacles that really? you think you're going to have suddenly don't seem as important <clears throat> because the bigger picture is right in front of you. You know, you're in the van, you've got all these things you can do. So, yeah, I think once you make that leap, you suddenly realise what you can and can't live without. And one thing as well is nothing is irreversible. So if you get on the road and there's something not quite right, you find a way to adapt to it. Mm. You either find yeah. the thing that you need, you think you need to use or you don't. So that's that's what I think. So, oh, so wise. I think that quite a few people are going to watch that and be inspired by that. Oh, I hope, I so. hope so. I hope, I hope so too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I am. I so. <laughs> exactly, so you, you can reverse things. Oh, darn, I shouldn't have thrown that broom away. Buy another broom. Yeah. yeah. Do, you, do you know what, actually? Sorry, on that point, that's really good because we've still got a storage unit with a few bits that were left over. And mm -hmm. um, the first thing we need to do when we get out of lockdown is actually go to the storage <clears> unit and sort it out because our original plan was to only travel for 12 months and then we thought we would buy another house and either rent it out or um, oh, you know wow. live in it ourselves. But after the first year obviously the end of our first year was the start of the pandemic so that kind of changed things but we also yeah. realized that we've got so much more we want to see and do and we're not ready yet so we've actually got a lot of stuff in storage that we kept hold of thinking oh that'll go into the new house and now we're like we don't need it you just realize you if you don't see it and you don't have it and you don't need it you just forget about it and then yeah. you know like you said you can yeah. buy whatever else you need but people hang on to they do it the reverse where they hang on to it thinking oh i might need that but actually i can't think of a lot of things you know personally i'm that, one of them what you hang on to I'm stuff a hoarder. Oh. Oh. oh so much <laughs> i do hoard so he's much, a nightmare <laughs> I, I could quite happily live with it, just a few it's, things. It's, it's not often sentimental value. It's, it's just purely because it's got a value, and I don't want to throw it away. Maybe I can get twenty quid for that. That's so, yeah. cheap. That is the That's hardest. That, sorry, that is the hardest part. Actually, <clears throat> is you kind of I do that as well. I hold on to things for their value, and I'm like, oh, I'm loath yeah. to get rid of it because it's got value to it. But then, like I say, I'm tr yeah. I've learnt to change a little bit. I've learnt to change that. Sell it. And, yeah, just sell, sell it. it and Convert take them, that. Take the money and run. Value into cash in your pocket straight away. Yeah. Exactly. Because it. Because now. Don't lazy. Just do it. Yeah, that's true. And now it means more <laughs> to us because me selling something for fifteen pounds. Well, that could be a night on a campsite, or that could be fuel, or that could yeah. be like the perspective has totally changed. So that's really helped, yeah. I think. And also, when when once you're in the van, then you also mm. do find stuff that you've sort of packed in the van that you sort of never use so mm -hmm. that's when you do actually you go through and you actually have a cleanse if you haven't used it for you know three or four weeks then the likelihood is you're probably not going to use it so you just get rid of it you, there's no there's no point in carrying around dead weight when when your whole house is on wheels mm -hmm. and the weight of it does actually affect you know the way it handles the fuel that you're using that's when you need to start get rid of stuff that you yep. just don't use so definitely i know weight's a big thing for you john yes it is. <laughs> we know yeah. The yeah see everyone knows it everyone knows he's got a strict <laughs> regime of when it comes in the van it's like no that can't come in yeah, how, heavy that? how heavy is that how heavy is that it's the scales out <laughs> yeah. so you you um moved into the van so you could start traveling mm -hmm. you had a year of moving all the time or did you stay in one place yeah where were you parking up initially oh so to start with um john was actually still working because we he didn't hand his mm. notice in until the house sale actually went through just to be a hundred percent sure that nothing would go yeah. wrong and we'd obviously have no jobs and end up having a mortgage to pay or anything like that so what we did is we actually mm. parked up in a local campsite for the first four weeks didn't we yeah whilst he finished out work um but what we did was we used that time at the weekends at the in the evenings to actually go to places that we've never been places that are 10 yeah. minutes half an hour down the road from us that we've never been to because mm. that's one thing we learned from traveling you know because we, we chose to travel the uk for a year rather than go to europe mm. and we found so many right. things even on our doorstep that we had never been to never seen before and that was amazing wasn't it, it was such a good way to start our travels because it just it made us so much more excited about well if this is right in front of us think what else we've got yeah. to find in this country that yeah. we've never seen or because being southerners you know from literally from portsmouth 
Um, <laughs> if we were going to do a driving holiday, we would never go more than about two or three hours away because otherwise it eats into your holiday time. Mm. So, you, of course, you, you mm -hmm. kind of don't realise you stay within like a certain, you know, sort of perimeter. So... That's why there was, you know, going up north was a revelation for us, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. People talk different. They they call things different things. <laughs> it's a different language. It is there. a different language, but it was. Oh, we loved. Oh, I just loved every minute of it. Yeah. Oh, I just want to get out travelling again. Have gravy on everything. <laughs> 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 And <laughs> <laughs> don't, I'll tell you, don't Lindsay's forget. That yeah, don't forget Lindsay's a, uh, she's a normal, uh, <laughs> She'll have us. She'll have us good. <laughs> I don't see a problem with gravy on everything. Yeah. So it's good. Salad, the lot. Oh, oh, she took it there. Oh, she went there. <laughs> okay, so how how did the pandemic impact? First of all, your immediate plans, and then longer term. Yeah, well, we had a we had a deathless for a year, didn't we? We had a we uh, took the opportunity with Erwin Harmon Group to uh, take one of their motorhomes up out for a year oh yeah um and so we did that and we were just literally traveling all year weren't we yep. in that and then obviously the pandemic hit at the end of that pretty much at the end of that year yeah which we were sort of deciding to go back into this current motorhome the one that we're in um and yeah that's that's sort of when the the pandemic hit and i was planning to then get a little bit of work because we had a year out so we needed to sort of start earning some money um, so I was planning to do some driving work because I had my um, HTV Class 2, two. licence mm -hmm. uh, by then. So it was, I was planning to do, do a bit of work like that. But uh, yeah, that, that started to get difficult because uh, all the sort of logistics pretty much stopped in the first what, in the first pandemic. Yeah. So that then started to get a bit difficult to find work. So you literally started and within your first four weeks it all got cancelled. Yeah. So he literally had his new job for like four weeks. Because the plan was we were going to travel around mm -hmm. and John can do driving work as we travel so we could combine the two. So John could work for a right. period in a space but he could go wherever the work is because we're not tied to one mm. place. But of course, like I say, that all went that all went peak tongue, didn't it? Cause, it is, yeah. um, because, yeah, the, obviously the pandemic hit and all the, he was doing a lot of food deliveries. So, of course, all the pubs shut, everything shut. And then that was it really and then yeah although you did go and drive for the nhs didn't you yeah yeah one one of the well yeah. probably the only positive thing that came out of out of the pandemic was um obviously the nhs were under real <clears throat> massive pressure so they needed more drivers to deliver stuff to the hospital so i took the opportunity to do that which was you know it was a good it was good work actually and, yeah um that was when we were separate well, separated but I was in this motorhome and you were in still in the death lefts. Yeah, so actually, because um, we couldn't return the death lefts when we were meant to because of the pandemic, because everything mm. shut down. So we were supposed to return it in March, but of course we had to keep it. <coughs> so it actually worked out really well. So I was living on his sister's driveway in the death lefts pulse, the lone one, and then he took mm. our van and was off in Bristol. Was it Bristol? Uh, Bridgewater, yeah. Yeah, it was, yeah. Yeah, 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 over that, over way. that way. So, Somerset, um, so yeah. yeah, over that way in the Sonic. So actually, for the first pandemic, we just spent this year travelling together, and then within two days, it all everything changed, and we ended up separated um, in separate vans for six, six seven weeks. Yeah, yeah, about something that, like yeah. that. So, yeah, a lot changed mm. when the pan when the first lockdown hit. Definitely. Yeah. And obviously, the the annoying thing was, uh, in the first lockdown was. They basically shut all the campsites, uh, so we effectively had nowhere to stay. Yeah, nowhere to that, go. That was the issue on the on the first lockdown was yeah. the fact that you know they didn't really consider that there are people that do live and tour full time in their vans and they haven't got anywhere to sort of go back to. Yeah. And uh, so that was that was pretty difficult, wasn't it? The first first lockdown because it was a bit sort of everything was up in the air. Yes. It was, you know, you there wasn't people weren't that friendly towards motorhomes especially in, in the first stages because they just thought that people they thought we were on holiday. holidays um, <laughs> so. did, did you encounter any of that hostility yeah <laughs> yeah so you oh. did yeah I, I did yeah when you were driving to where you ended up working yeah because it because it was somerset mm. you know driving back there uh, I went sort of the back way one one time through like the little villages and stuff and yeah people were like shouting at me like, as I was driving along the road and shaking their heads and, and like trying to block you in and not letting you out and yeah. and then I was on his sister's driveway and I had people who would um, come and knock her front door 
whilst I was in there saying did you know someone's in your camper van and she's like yes and <laughs> I used to get you know I used to get people um you know looking at me like I say knocking her door and uh, knocking the door because oh there's cats trapped in there <laughs> and there was one time where I was coming out of the van because I was going to walk to the shops to do my food shopping and um mm. a guy saw me locking the door and then obviously you double check it when you leave it don't you he looked at me I looked at him so I hung around and then as I walked away John's sister texted me and said oh some guy's just come to the door telling me that someone's been trying to break into the van because he saw me checking the door and <laughs> thought I was trying to break into the motorhome our own van well uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> so it yeah. was yeah it was definitely a, a weird time and it, yeah. it wasn't the best was it, it wasn't was yeah I think that, everyone was yeah. just so scared at that time yeah but, well. But it was scared, fear of the unknown or fear of different things, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. So tell me more about the Deathless. Am I right in thinking you blagged a brand new Deathless <laughs> motorhome for free for a year? Well, we, we didn't blag it. I mean, you know, we're not... <laughs> no, they, they actually advertised they, for it. So, yeah, because we're not very good blaggers, are we? No, we're not we very, don't, we're we not don't good, ask for it. Yeah, we're not good at asking for stuff. <laughs> we need to get better at that. But you got it free for a year. So, yeah, basically what happens is the Erwin Heimer Group, who have obviously many, many brands under them, you know, like obviously Heimer, Deflefs, Burstner, Corrado, yeah. Eldis, etc., they uh, run a run a sort of program where they actually have people that go off blogging for a year in their van. So they actually loan them the van for a year. They don't pay for anything. You get the van, but everything else is you know funded by yourself. It's all your own trip. And um, what they do is they advertise for it on their social media. And we had actually been following two different. So the Grey Gappers and the Office is Closed. Um, we'd actually been following those guys from their journeys. And um, because obviously we've always you know we've been big into the shows, the motorhome magazines we used to follow all of it when we were researching and one day I said oh my gosh they get given a van for a year and they get to go off traveling wouldn't like how right. jammy I wonder if like wouldn't it be amazing if we could do that mm -hmm. and then fast forward to like I think it was about four months before the house was due to be sold an advert popped up on their Instagram and it was like <laughs> oh do you fancy being our next deaf left blogger and I was like oh, should I do it but at the time we were hesitant because we had already put everything in place to go traveling in our van so we didn't necessarily need to do it but we thought oh do you know what it's too good an opportunity and john was like oh just apply apply so i emailed them didn't hear anything back and then about a week later i did get an email back and they were like oh hi guys like you know we sort of went, we got your email and we want to have a chat with you so basically a couple of weeks was it like about four weeks after that yeah. from Portsmouth we ended up driving all the way up to Durham where their head office is and um, to have a meeting with them and it was the most chilled meeting I've ever had it was yeah, just, they're, it's, they're just so crazy it's so chilled so it was all a bit weird we drove yeah. all the way to Durham we had four days to turn it around we drove all the way to Durham had this meeting and then they were like yeah cool we just wanted to meet you really and get a feel for you absolutely fine let's crack on and we were like <gasps> and then fast forward another you know two months because it was being built and had to be shipped over from Germany so yeah fast forward another two months and um that was it we were it was in the country it just we um didn't actually move into it we moved out the house though did we no it wasn't there because it was delayed yeah we so we moved into the the Sonic this one first and yep. then when that turned up we moved sort of out so move house into the mat home move house again from the motorhome into another motorhome and then back again <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. it was just yeah it was all yeah. so yeah it was, it was a real whirlwind f few weeks yeah, wasn't it, it? Was, it was worth it we, though yeah another oh, um, just... to get to get knowledge of another brand as well yes. another, another motorhome um no, in the end it wasn't it was a bit too big for us because we sort of found when we were we because we were touring in in the uk pretty much exclusively and a lot of the UK is not set up for big vans, as you as you probably know. Um, and this this was a, this was yes. like this was only like seven point six meters, but we found even at seven point six, we sort of struggled a little bit. It was just that just that little half a meter too probably long, wasn't too it? Too long, yeah, for us. Because um, ours is seven meters, and we find that to be perfect. We yeah. find that to be comfortable to live in. But also enough that we can manoeuvre it; it can fit in two parking spaces and all that sort of stuff. So, um, so actually, because mm. a lot of people said to us, "Well, why would you take the free van when you had your own?" And it's, it was more about the experience because yeah. we got to work with a yeah. brand in an industry that we absolutely love and you know wanted to be yeah. a part of, and it kind of opened up our eyes to, like John said, another brand, and it actually taught us how we travel because obviously we didn't know long-term travel is totally different to holiday travel so we learned a lot about ourselves how we travel so it means that we are able to then set our motorhome up 
exactly to our requirements before we moved back into it. So it was more about the experience that we gained, yeah. like 10 times over. Mm. Were you already writing and blogging at that point or did that come afterwards? Because I know that's what... Yeah, that, ca that, that came afterwards actually. So the, the with the Owenheimer deal, it was basically they just won it on Facebook. Um, just oh. on social media like instagram and facebook yeah. but of course when i was writing out the posts um they were getting sort of longer and long or some of them I, I had to tone them back and then that was when i re remembered or it was reignited how much i love writing because i was actually going to do journalism yeah. straight out of college and i've got city and guilds like diplomas and stuff in like journalism and radio and tv and stuff but of course i never ended up going into that i went into retail so doing this okay. has also reignited my passion for writing and so now obviously if I can try and combine the two so that I can continue the lifestyle I love but actually do something I love at the same time then that's got to be a win-win for me so uh, so yeah so the oh, blogging yeah. kind of came quite late into that year when I sort of was like oh do you know what I just love it I just enjoy it so much I love reading your blogs. I really love your style of writing. I enjoy. Thank you enjoy so. Thank them. you so much. That's actually amazing. It means a lot because I'm, I'm quite critical of myself, but writing is the one thing I'm quite happy and confident with, and I really enjoy it. So. Excellent. So you should be. Thank so you. Ah, yeah. that's really sweet. <laughs> so, what constitutes a holiday to you now then? Oh. Don't know. <laughs> or is life just one big holiday with a bit of writing? <laughs> yeah, just I think. Yeah, we wouldn't ever consider going on a holiday because it is the lifestyle gives us the freedom where we don't actually need a holiday. I think. Yeah, I, well, I think the thing is for us, a holiday would probably be stopping on a campsite maybe for a few days or a week and actually stopping and chilling out and not moving. It's kind yeah, of probably, yeah. it kind yeah. of reverses your your idea of a rest or a break because obviously, you know, traveling. Don't get me wrong; it's amazing. But sometimes yeah. when you're moving all the time and obviously like if you're like us and you get really excited every time you go to like a new castle or an abbey or something, you actually just, I think you get so <laughs> excited. You do, you, you, my rubble, yes. Um, you, uh, yes. I think you wear yourself out a little bit, don't you? Yeah. So sometimes, and because we've met so many amazing people on the road, I don't think I've ever had so much interaction with people. So, and that's amazing, mm. but I think it's the reverse now. So you have a few days where you stop, yeah. you stay on a campsite and you haven't got to think about moving, you haven't got to think about where you're going to empty, fill up etc and that becomes your rest period if mm. that makes sense i think it does make sense mm. no it totally makes sense when we're on the road i often say right enough yes need to stay here for yeah. a little while yeah. and that's it you just need to stop washing done <laughs> yeah. Oh, <I> know. <laughs> yeah actually how does washing constitute the holiday part of our um holiday that's no. not right yeah. well, when you're away for so long you know and you need to do washing when you're away when we're away for six weeks you know we need to do washing once a week. Yeah, that's yeah. A out time now. That is. Mm. That is. <laughs> yeah. Um, where has been your favourite destination so far? Where have you been to that's blown your socks off? The Ooh. most. This probably changed quite a lot while we were travelling. So my initial answer would be Wales, because Wales yeah. was somewhere we just absolutely wanted to explore, and mm. the more we saw, we just couldn't get enough of it. But then, so, like, we went up north to the north of England. And as I say, because we've not really been to the north of England before, certainly I haven't, mm. I was, you know, up in Yorkshire and up in all these places and I just thought, wow, it's it's a different kind yeah. of beautiful. Um, and then obviously we got a taster of Scotland late last year because we were supposed to do yes. Scotland, but we obviously ran out of time before the first lockdown. Mm. And then we got a taster of it last year and again, that absolutely blew our socks off. So... Oh, I don't know. Do you know what? I don't know if I can mm. pick one area because the one thing I've learned about the UK is it has something for everybody. Mm. You know, you've got beaches, yeah. you've got mountains, you've got landscapes, you've got rolling hills. You've There's just something for everybody. And every new bit we discovered was oh, just more amazing than the last, I think. Yeah. I, I don't know. I don't know about you. I've just totally mm -hmm. answered that. Yeah, no, I, I think so. I think I'm probably probably the same. It's difficult to, to pick any one place. I mean, we're we're used to coastal aren't we we're yes coastal is because we used to live down south so we were, we were almost on the sea is essentially where we used to live so we've always mm. had that pull towards coastal but and we've never really gone that much inland no so it's when you go inland and again you, that's where you see even more sort of beauty and it's a different sort of beauty isn't it so what's your dream post-covid trip oh if you could go anywhere we want to do, yeah, we want to do Scotland. We want to go back to properly, Scotland. Like, like for a long, longer period of time. Just go and get lost. Um, go, lost. 
probably sort of more the Highlands, maybe even the, the Hebrides as well. Because mm -hmm. yeah, you know, MC five hundred. Oh, I don't know. Wanna... Probably what? keep away yeah, from that. We're one. A bit, yeah, we're actually wanted to sort Do of it? stay off the stay off the more popular routes if. If, yeah, we can. If, if we can as yeah. a personal preference yeah. even though there's so many amazing things to see on there because we did a touch of it on our trip last year but for us we just want to go mm. and get lost and find all the all the nitty gritty bits yeah, that you know gems. yeah well, it's popular for a reason it is though. popular and i'm kind of pleased we did it in 2016 because mm. it's, it's very popular now and yeah. you're right it's very busy now yeah could you next time we do Scotland I want to do a whiskey tour as well <gasps> yes I don't really drink a lot of whiskey but I do fancy doing a whiskey tour and <laughs> we will and join you in research yeah in the, okay. in the name of research uh, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I think, absolutely um, I think they've got them at I don't know whether they still do them at Fort William I know they obviously I had to I had to stop because there mm. is a distillery at um, Fort William so I don't know whether they're still doing that there because you there's it's a massive place and you can just stop in the car park because you probably need probably 48 hours really to, <laughs> yeah. to get over that before you start driving so yeah we'll look into that john i i did enjoy our evening of uh, drinking whiskey john so yeah. we'll look into that yeah, yeah. yes do you know i haven't seen him be all that that sociable and that excitable for a long time so that was really lovely for me to watch you Yay. two just get you know just having a chat okay. drinking some nice whiskey um, he was still a it little bit lovely. tipsy the next day oh, so yeah. it's a good job we weren't Great. moving for a few days yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um who cooks in the van Generally, John. me. Yeah, Johnny. Johnny is the cook. I've, but always, then, I've always cooked in the house, so. To be fair, cook. You're good at cooking. Cooking's not my strong point. Whereas I'm sort of more of the cleaner. Cleaning, I'm happy and comfortable with, and I like things done a certain way. So yeah. it tends to go. He tends to be the cook. I tend to clean. But we do a little bit of both each. Hmm. Has how you've cooked changed since you moved from the the house into the van? Oh, definitely. Yeah. Kind of you got there's obviously you have so much less space. You know, you've got no real worktop to sort of live with and the oven is like half the size so you can I, I think we just we cut quite basic meals we don't I don't know, I don't I don't really go that much for cooking the sort of more extravagant stuff now we just sort of go for basic sustenance now because yeah. it's it's yeah. fuel that's yeah, all it fuel, is it's just yeah. fuel just yeah it's just fuel so so yeah. and the other thing about traveling is a huge part of that was actually eating out because yeah. obviously the whole point was we got to go and try places where they serve food different to what we're used to which sounds crazy in the uk but like i say the whole north south thing yeah. you know we tried some amazing things and in wales oh you can't go to wales and not try all the like you know locally sourced meat and all that sort of stuff so i think eating out was a huge part of our travels and we did a lot of pub stops yeah. so again that would kind of naturally actually go hand in hand with that <laughs> so yeah sounds awesome yeah, we like pub <sighs> stops pub yeah. stops are fantastic yeah. yes yeah. we like them they too good. very much yes. yeah. yeah okay so if money's no object or someone wants to give you a free van again what <laughs> would you do what upgrades would you have or what van would you choose oh you can take this one to start with that's a difficult one it is a difficult one because mm. you'd want to go you see if it was if we were going to europe then the size of the van wouldn't be an issue because you, you can just really go for a you know a, an Agreed. eight or a nine meter motorhome in europe is like almost classed as a small van so yeah if, <laughs> if we were going to europe then yeah it would be maybe like the deathless uh, alpha something like that or yeah. one of the bigger adrias i think yeah the, the bigger the grand bigger. alpers the, the, the deathless grand alpha is our it is it is our uh, favorite van that's what we want yeah and it's just me and Lindsay on the road oh, yeah. okay yeah they're okay. awesome they're nice and obviously haven't had the deathless now obviously it's a brand that we would feel comfortable you know yeah. it's it's one that we would feel confident sort of you know going with um either that or the bigger sonic so the bigger version of what yeah. we've got now but like the sort of big fancy version yeah the supreme the supreme <laughs> that would be nice um but, but then you want to go bigger, whereas I quite like it being fairly small. I wouldn't want to go too big because I just feel like it's a bit of a... I've got used to having less space and just the space that I need rather than loads of excess space that I don't need. So I don't know if I would feel slightly different. Yeah, actually. I think it's a lounge, isn't it? You miss a lounge. I do miss a sofa. Mm. So when we were in that static caravan last week while, or the yeah. other week while we moved yeah. out of ours because it had to have like hab check and all that stuff, that was the only thing I really missed was the sofa. I think so yeah it might be if you wanted a 
better one or someone was going to give you one then it, you could go for something with a lounge very you? true very true we love our rear lounge we love our rear lounge i'd go for a lounge and um a really good sized bathroom as well a bigger i wouldn't bathroom. see a bigger bathroom as a waste of space yeah yeah no that's that's very true yeah. good use of space yeah, yeah. so you, you you had your you, you had your time in the static mm -hmm. um would you go back to bricks my honest answer is no, no. not at all, no, not no. at all. Got no plans, no, no plans still at the moment. No, if, if anything, I think in <laughs> lockdown it was nice because obviously you can't go anywhere, but I know for a fact mm. the second, if we'd have been staying in that whilst the world was open again, the novelty probably would have worn off after a while um, if we were in it sort of longer Absolutely. term because yeah. I just, yeah, we actually missed the van terribly, didn't we? Yeah, e just, even for the week that we were in the static, it yeah. was like, it was actually quite nice to actually get back into the van. Yeah. It was even even though static was lovely. Oh, static was beautiful, it spacious. Was just, we were just like, oh, it's you know, nice to get back in the van. Yeah, this is home. There's no place like home. No, yeah. no place like home. Hundred percent. Even the home um, is where you park it. Yeah. It is, <laughs> and even the cats weren't settled in the static. They, which is really nice for us to know, but they they wouldn't settle for quite a few days no. and then as soon as we got back in here it took them about an hour and then they were fine and they slept for like a whole day solid because i yeah. think they hadn't they hadn't settled properly the whole time we were in there so definitely this is better for all of us i think mm. um have you both got a favorite gadget in your van um i don't know if i have actually i suppose the latest one actually is the power oak because since we've had it um, it's mm. been like we sit it on the table beside us like where we're sat now and we can just plug everything into it and there's no wires trailing across the van to reach the USB sockets and things like that so I think Perfect. probably one of my Brilliant. just looking around mm. but I think that's our favorite that's my favorite gadget because I think it's just so handy and we can plug everything into it at once I'll tell mm. you what my favorite non-electrical yeah. gadget is though and that is the yeah. um, sorry I'm looking behind me because it's over the bed is the phone <laughs> holder that we've got that clips onto a surface so basically we can Ooh. clip it on the we've got shelf shelving uh, above our bed hmm. and we can clip it on there and then have the phone mounted so we can like watch tv or watch programs in bed that's my other favorite um like non-electric gadget fancy. in here that's two two great gadgets yeah there. yeah yeah. Uh, yeah like like that yeah. answer it's brilliant what about you john john I come on, what's your one I think for me, it's probably got to be the lithium batteries. I think that that's changed our lives in the van. Mm. Yeah, because true. Because without the power, you essentially can't do anything. And that's that's another thing we learned with the Deflex, because that only had like the one leisure battery, and it was just a normal generic mm. uh, lead acid. And it had no solar either. And it had no <laughs> solar. Um, so so yeah. yeah, I think the, the lithium, the capacity you get with, with the lithiums is just incredible really you, yeah. you don't really need anything else well i think it's twofold isn't when it because sorry we we learnt to live without power in the deaf lefts because we learnt to you know we literally used to sit around in the evenings with head torches on if we were trying to save power if we were wild camping um so we actually learned we had some very big power lessons you know sort of quite early on yeah. so we've now gone from having no power to having more power you know Convenience, because we've yeah. got used to not being high power users um, we've obviously got used to that now so now it's like a luxury isn't it we can have all the lights on if we want yeah. we can plug whatever we want in and um, yeah I, I, that's a good, a good shout actually John yeah. the batteries or oh, what about the air suspension yeah. the lithiums yeah this, if you're going to oh, go for two yeah. Yeah. if you're going to go oh. for two then the air suspension is probably the other one yeah we've got <laughs> full, air, full air suspension so no more levelling chocks yeah um, that's just, one thing we want that's oh. one thing we haven't got we've got the solar we've got the lithium the next van will have the uh, the leveling suspension yeah yeah I, yeah I would say yeah. definitely i mean it's a lot of money and some people are like oh that's such a waste of money it's like but for us and our yeah. lifestyle now we don't again yeah. cause in the deaf lefts obviously being bigger as well if we were doing a park up and it was on an angle or it was a nightmare whereas now we don't have to mm. think about that and it rides it drives better as well doesn't it yeah, yeah it rides rides nicer and there's no if you're wild camping the last thing you know if, the last thing you want to do is turn up somewhere it's raining it's windy the last thing you want to do is get out and start messing around with chocks so basically yeah, yeah. and they're, they're, yeah. they're dangerous as well sometimes aren't they when you're trying to teeter up the oh up the i know yeah you hit level it's like but now we just press a button i've gone over the top of them a few times yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> i think, I think it's when like, he puts them out there but he's going it's like a rite of passage isn't yeah. it you've got to do it at some point <laughs> <laughs> yes. so, yeah. even after all these years experience it still happens yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely yeah. yeah i blame the co-pilots for <gasps> judging it wrong Ooh. do you know it's always on gravel 
when they yeah. slip. They slip. Yes, because yeah. they, they ping mm. out. In fact, on the deaf left, I don't know if we should... Oh, they won't watch this. We John actually <laughs> nearly took out the... Um, they put the gas flow safe fill bit underneath the bodywork, mm. didn't they? So it poked out from under the van. And uh, one mm -hmm. time, a chalk actually pinged out from under the wheel <laughs> and went clean into the safe fill, the gas flow point thing. <laughs> yeah. So John had to uh, right? do a bit... Oh, it was yeah, yeah. Just, 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 a little, just a little nudge and a... Just needed yeah. adjusting back. Just a bit of an adjustment. But, um, yeah, so chocks, they're violent it, when they ping it, out. John's handy like that. I know John is very, very handy. Yes, mm. he is. Like I think all your years... Oh, sorry, so all your years as a mechanic and obviously helping out on the motorhomes now, it's been invaluable mm. to, to that life mm. on the road. Yeah, what's he doing right now? He's working on motorhomes yeah. right now, I understand. Yeah, working, uh, working at a sales place, basically. We sell motorhomes, and it is literally just getting them ready for for sale. But it's it's any any work that they need, really. So fridges, gas, you know, on the gas side as well. Um, so yeah, it's been it's been really, really good to actually learn like a lot because we live in a motorhome so it's been really good to actually learn how right. to fix pretty much anything on the motorhome yeah it's been brilliant because i think the first yeah. thing you said to me was that you now feel more comfortable if something happens on here which a few things have happened naturally <coughs> um you don't feel mm. you just go for it now you just yeah. start trying to fix it and it's like oh and it, it you realize it's a lot easier than you think obviously if you know yeah. roughly what you're looking for but um and also i love it because um i get to go nosing in other motorhomes because i love I love looking at layouts and I love looking at other motorhomes so I like it as well because <laughs> I'm nosy. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> Good. I, yeah. Lindsay <laughs> I was like, doesn't a, everybody? Yeah. yeah, it's just like when you go around a friend's house for a cup of tea and you go, you know, you go, oh, I need the toilet and you go upstairs and you just have to have a little look around and have a nose in open doors and yeah, just love looking at other stuff like that. <laughs> right. Nosy girls. Yes. Oh, yep. Yeah. That's all right. I don't mind. It's fine. I'll take that. I'll take that. <laughs> I'll take that too. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Our very, very last question okay. is, um, what is your advice for anybody who is really thinking about moving into a motorhome full time? Okay. I would say, probably touched on what I did earlier, is that write down, if you've got any obstacles or anything that you think you're worried about just write them down um and then maybe start trying to do without them if you know what i mean and then you'll get to realize mm. that actually anything you can work your way around anything that you think you know you can't live without or you can't do you can because i prom mm. i know it sounds cheesy but i promise you once you get to the other side and you make the leap you will not you will not regret it and like i said no decision is reversible so it's not the end of the world. You can always change your mind. You can change what you're doing. So that's that's what I would say is just, you know, just mm. smash those those objections, just tackle them head on and you'll realise that actually um, I don't think there's many things that would that would stop you from actually doing it if it's what you really want to do because mm. it's totally worth it. Mm. And what about you, John? I think, yeah, I th a lot of it is planning, isn't it? There's a lot of planning. That, you know, if you are going to just literally sell everything and um yeah I'm, right, Rosie. <laughs> I'm so sorry but they've been so good the whole time but rosie's just decided to come up and start like headbutting all the equipment right. and uh and hey, everyone wants to see the girls that's all right yeah. to be fair that's, that's right. probably what they're waiting for they're going to be hugely disappointed because no one's popped up the whole time we've been on <laughs> doing this so um yeah sorry john so, i totally interrupted so john, you there so john uh, john apart from a good set of scales to weigh everything what what <laughs> What's the advice that you've got? <laughs> yeah, just I think just planning, and yeah, it is a big leap of faith. But so don't don't really let anything put you off. Obviously, make this make sure you're going to be you know, financially secure and stuff like that. But it's yeah, just go for it. Yeah, that yeah, that's probably the bottom line, isn't it? Just go for it. Just plan it and go yeah. for it. I think. Yeah. Trust the process. Yes, exactly that. It sounds really corny, mm. but having done it, and as a person that plans a lot and as a person that wouldn't normally make such big kind of decisions without you know really overthinking it through i i can personally say just do it it is so worth it so worth it in fact we asked there is there is one more question oh oh, oh. in fact i asked darren if he thought i should ask you any questions <gasps> yes oh god <laughs> what did he say <laughs> what was his words 
ask her where the nickname Hulk came from. Oh. <laughs> where the nickname Hulk came from. Because <laughs> he knows I can't swear and call him a name because we're on a family show. Um, I can beep it out. That's right. So basically the name Hulk came from, I get accused of breaking things in here. And when we were in, it was actually when we were in Scotland, so our habitation door, the handle to close it, it was already weak. No, weakened. It, was, it weakened. was weakened already and basically what happened is I went to shut the door and the handle came clean off in my hand and so they call me Hulk smash because they're like oh you Hulk smash everything <laughs> so because and I think the other thing was <clears throat> they call me Portsmouth because um they just assume that I'm going to go on a rampage and ruin everything so that's that's where it turned into Hulk smash from me going on rampages which I don't I, I feel a new t-shirt coming along oh yeah. don't I don't I don't do that by the way I'm actually not you know i don't go rampaging but yeah the, the, the handle came clean off in my hand you see it, i think i know it, it must have been loose yeah it was loose it was <laughs> loose it was already weak so uh, it's not my fault <laughs> see Damn. i know you're a lover not a fight yes thank you definitely. unless yeah. you know unless you hurt like my girls or john or one of my friends or someone i love then that's different but other than that yeah other than that yeah perfect well Tash and John, I mean, it, the time's gone flying by yeah. chatting with friends like oh. that, you know. Um, it's been really great having you on. Thank you so much for taking the time out. Thank you so yeah, much you. for having us. Like, it has gone, it's flown by. I could just sit and chat to you guys all night. It's yeah. really nice. Thank you so much for having us on. Thanks for sharing your different perspective on how you use your motorhome to help yes. other people we've talked to about this already use theirs. Thank you. You are, I think you're the third... You are the third full-timers we've had on because mm. we're really interested in full-time van life as well. And I know other people um, will be, so it's good to get that perspective, isn't yeah. it? Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Oh, brilliant. Well, oh, thank brilliant. you. Yeah, thank you so much. Yeah, we've enjoyed your, your um, take on it as well, actually. The, yeah, all the interviews you've done have been really interesting. Oh, yeah, we love them. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Well, whilst, whilst we can't travel, we are a remote home travel <laughs> yeah, channel, but whilst we can't travel... I, I get to go full on fangirl and make new best friends. They might not know we're best friends yet, but I know. They know. They know. They know they are my there. best friends. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I know you guys are best friends. <laughs> we are anyway. Right? Absolutely. <laughs> well, great stuff. Well, listen, lockdown hopefully is lifting real soon and yeah. hopefully we're going to get out and about and bump into you in a field. Oh, so, yeah. Can't yeah. wait. Get the whiskey ready. Can't yeah. wait. Absolutely. We will. All right. All right then. Cheers. All right. Okay. Well, we'll see you soon, guys. Thanks Thank so much. You. Thank you. See you later. Bye. 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 Bye.